Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's March 5th. We want to tell you about a little girl over in Alabama who is doing what she can to raise money for her own brain surgery. Yeah, this is Liz Scott, and she's seven years old, and she started a lemonade stand at her mom's bakery last summer, initially so she could buy some, you know, frilly toys and sequent high heel shoes. But now, again, like Mark said, she's now raising money for her own brain surgery. Yeah, little Liza was still in the hospital after suffering two major seizures when she came up with the idea to help out, and her mom uh, was like, you don't have to do that. There's no expectation of her doing anything to help me help pay the bills. I'm a single mom. I can take care of my kids on my own. Still, Liza wanted to help and she has. Her little stand has made more than $12,000 in a few days. All right, so despite having good insurance through the popular bakery she runs with her dad, Liza's mom said she was quickly going to see a, some pretty high bills uh, start to pile up. So she also set up an online fundraiser. And friends, family, and others who have been touched by Liza's story have already donated more than $300,000 to that one. But uh, the bubbly little girl who likes Barbies, dressing up in lemonade, Liza hasn't shown any signs of major health problems until January 30th. Her mom said she had a massive seizure, and now they're working on getting on top of that situation up at Boston Children's Hospital. The great thing, I love Liza's little outlook. She said she's trying not too much to think about what they call my brain thingy. My brain thingy. Aww. Yeah. Seven years old. <sighs> My goodness. We wish her the best, yes, our whole family. Do. Let's look at today's nine at nine. The Senate will begin voting on amendments to the nearly $2 trillion COVID-19 relief bill today, which could stretch into Saturday morning. Democrats hope to have the bill approved before next week. The acting chief of the Capitol Police has requested to keep National Guard troops at the Capitol for another two months. It comes as the Department of Homeland Security and FBI are warning of threats posed by domestic extremists. Another woman is accusing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo of sexual misconduct. In an interview, Charlotte Bennett says she believes the governor was trying to sleep with her and says she was uncomfortable with questions he asked her. Pope Francis has arrived in Iraq for a visit to rally the country's dwindling Christian community after decades of war. It marks the first ever papal visit to the country. Two family detention centers in Dilley and Carnes counties could soon become rapid processing hubs for migrants at the border. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the goal is to screen migrant parents and children, then release them within 72 hours. The Biden administration is urging the Supreme Court to dismiss pending cases concerning sanctuary cities, which limit cooperation between local law enforcement and federal immigration authorities. The Texas Tribune reports ERCOT made a $16 billion error in pricing during the winter storms. An independent market monitor says ERCOT failed to bring prices back down on time, forcing utility companies to buy power in the market at inflated prices. This caused some customers to shoulder the costs. The president and CEO of ERCOT, Bill Magnus, says he will not seek or accept the more than $800,000 in severance pay outlined in his contract. This after the company's board gave him a 60-day termination notice. T-Mobile hoping to reach more businesses. The company releasing new corporate wireless plans with unlimited data and 5G access, as well as cloud-based workplace communication tools. And that's today's Night at Nine. Ah, we are so glad it is Friday. Yes, we are, and we're looking forward to a nice weekend too, right, Sarah? Yeah, absolutely. The weather this weekend is going to be seasonable, and we are not going to have to worry about any weather hiccups, so that's some good news. Outside right now, though, it does look pretty gray out there, doesn't it? Here's a look at visibility. Uh, we're seeing that visibility is down in some places, like out at JBSA Randolph, visibility is down to four miles, down to two in New Braunfels, so we are seeing some areas of fog, but up in Kerrville, visibility was at a quarter of a mile, but look at that perfect visibility. Now skies are starting to clear and in today's forecast, it's going to be a beautiful day with these clearing skies this morning. We're going to have a warm and sunny afternoon and ahead in the weekend. It will be pleasant and seasonable with mornings in the 40s and afternoons in the 60s. Some more good news for you. Let's take a look at the pollen count just came in. Molds are low down from yesterday. Ash and elm are low as well. And guess what I do not see on the pollen count mountain cedar. No mountain cedar on the pollen count. We're hoping that that trend continues as mountain cedar season 
and has been extended a little bit longer than average. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about today's weather and how it's going to get breezy. And we'll talk about the beautiful weekend ahead. That's a deal, Sarah Spivey. Thank you very much. Uh, Transguide right now. We're looking at 410 and 151. Traffic is flowing in all directions. And top stories we are following today. New information about an overnight shooting on the south side. Yeah, San Antonio police tell us the man who was shot by his wife's son has died. It happened around 1230 this morning in the 100 block of, block of Alvarez Place. Night Hill Jaron Diego Garcia is now facing murder charges. Uh, investigators say the two started arguing because the man was threatening his mom. Investigators tell us a man hit Garcia in the head with a speaker, and that's when Garcia shot him several times. First responders took the man to the hospital where he later died. Police have not released the name of the man killed. To another homicide case here in our area, a man killed in an apartment complex not far from Fair Oaks Ranch. Bear County Sheriff's deputies are now asking people to come forward with possible information. Investigators say several people were inside an apartment at the Rustico at Fair Oaks Apartments when someone shot the man. This is around 2 this morning. Deputies found the victim dead with a gunshot wound to the face. Medical examiner's office has not released the victim's name yet. BCSO wants uh, anyone to know if you saw anything or heard anything unusual near the scene to call them immediately at 210-335-6000. We are also waiting to learn the name of the woman killed during a crash on San Antonio's north side overnight. Police say just before 2 this morning, the woman lost control of her vehicle and jumped a barrier on the access road of Loop 1604 near Bitters Road. Officers tell us the vehicle then hit a nearby pole. The medical examiner pronounced her dead at the scene. No other vehicles were involved in this crash. Well, med clinics in San Antonio now have 9,000 COVID-19 vaccines up for grabs. That's right. The hotline to make reservations opened up uh, just over an hour ago after that new shipment arrived. The number to call on your screen, 1-833-968-1745. People who still need their first dose of vaccine can schedule appointments at the Elvira Cisneros and Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior Centers. Right now, only people 65 and older or 18 and older with a chronic health condition can get the vaccine. You can call the hotline every day from 8 in the morning to 8 at night until all reservations are full. A bill that would make it illegal for social media companies to censor people based on their beliefs in the state of Texas. Governor Greg Abbott will hold a press conference today to talk about Senate Bill 12. He will be joined by State Senator Brian Hughes. The press conference is scheduled for noon from Tyler. We will be live streaming it on our website at KSAT.com. A special committee will meet later this morning to investigate the response to last month's winter weather crisis. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says you can be part of it. The mayor created the panel to examine what happened with CPS Energy and SAWS. The meeting starts at 10 a.m. at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Now you can watch it live on TV uh, SA or dial in for audio by calling 210-207-5555. The mayor says if you decide to attend in person, you'll need to follow health and safety protocols for COVID-19. In your morning headlines, good news from the Labor Department and a former police chief accused of arson. A baby hit by a bullet during a shooting over in Houston and surviving an avalanche. We say good morning on this Friday to Mr. David Sears. You How know, you avalanches can be so scary, but oh man, man, there's something else when you look back and there's just a whole wall mm. of snow coming at you. We'll have that for you just a second, but first we're going to start with some good news this morning. Employers added 379,000 jobs in February. That's the most since last October. A good sign for the economy while more and more businesses start to reopen and bring back employees or hire new ones. The COVID-19 numbers continue to go down and so does the unemployment rate. It dropped to 6.2 percent. You know what they say about payback? A police chief in Maryland taking it to new heights or depths. This is him allegedly dousing homes with gas and then setting them on fire. It's all about revenge and according to investigators, it's revenge against his enemies like his stepson. Investigators say the 69 year old David Crawford is the one under that hood. He has been setting fire since 2011. They finally got good evidence against him in 2019. The evidence included security videos. Those videos showed the same guy was setting fires across five counties. As investigators pursued the case, they even came across a target list. On that list, addresses of homes that were burned. One of his alleged victims was the guy who replaced him as police chief after he was fired. To go outside to find my house engulfed and have to come in and wake my family and get them out of the house 
It, it's just, it, it knocked me to my knees. While there were no reported injuries to either residents or fire department personnel as a result of these fires, the outcome could have been very different. Crawford also would, after his own stepson, according to investigators, his stepson moved several times, but Crawford would find him and burn that house down. Crawford has been charged with several counts of arson and attempted murder. Talk about a terrible tragedy in Houston. This was the case. This is the chase right here. You see the police chasing this car right here. Now watch, you'll see the guy get out of the car and he's gonna run over here to these gas pumps. There's a lady over there filling her car up with gas. The police swarm that car. The suspect jumps in, police fire and kill him. Unfortunately, when they fired, a one-year-old was hit. That baby is in the hospital and it is stable this morning. The police released the security video, but they did not release any more information on the baby. So we don't know how badly the baby was injured by the bullet. The baby was in the back seat of the car while mom was pumping the gas. Once again, the suspect is dead. He was wanted in several violent robberies. All right, meet Ryan Hill. He's an avalanche survivor. Ryan and his cousin were skiing the back country just outside of Lake Tahoe in California. As he was headed down the mountain late in the day, he was being chased by an avalanche. He'll had to make some split second decisions like going over a hundred foot cliff. That avalanche eventually caught him, took him down another 200 yards and then buried him. His cousin came to the rescue and saved his life. He said I was fully buried except for just my hand, like my arm hand was sticking out. All right, here we go. Hill suffered a small brain bleed, five spinal fractures, broken ribs, nine through 12, and a collapsed lung. He spent 11 days in the hospital, but he has survived. That's an incredible story there. All right, finally this morning, another tool in the underwater pipeline repair kit. That is Elum. I think that's how you say it. Looks like a snake or an eel. Kind of creepy the way it can move around. Thing can fix underwater equipment, wells, and ocean floor pipelines. It can go down almost 600 feet. It can stay on the docking station for six months before it has to come up to the surface. And it can go 12 and a half miles on one charge. It should cut costs of maintenance from the usual 100 grand a day. During the BP oil spill back I, I, in the Gulf, I don't huh? Know. Maybe that's one of the reasons why they developed this. Yeah, thing. pretty cool technology. To prevent things like that. Thank you, David. All right. Hey, just saw real quick on Facebook, SAPD's posted they're going to have some uh, detonations. The bomb squad doing some exercises this morning between 10:30 and 12:30 this afternoon down at the academy at 4:10 and Morrison. But if you hear what sounds like booms. Down on the south side, again, it's SAPD just doing some training. Right, not to worry. Time now is 9-10 and still ahead on GMSA at 9. New month means a new pick for our KSAP Book Club. How this book celebrates Women's History Month. CPS Energy is facing backlash over power outages during last month's winter storm. Dylan Collier joins us to discuss what questions the company has yet to answer. They've been shut down for a year due to the pandemic, but it's finally time for everyone, no matter their abilities, to come have some fun at Morgan's Wonderland. Joy already as she's fluttering by. After the break, we'll be live from Morgan's Wonderland for their grand reopening happening today. Thank you, Alicia. Let's check stocks right now. Friday is starting out in a positive territory, up about 240 points at 31,164. And welcome back. It's 914. This month marks one year since Morgan's Wonderland shut down due to the pandemic. Yeah, after hitting pause for a year to work with medical experts and follow all COVID-19 safety protocols, the ultra accessible theme park says they are ready to wel welcome back the public. Our Alicia Barrera is live from Morgan's Wonderland where doors are going to be open in less than an hour. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It is 9.15, so in 45 minutes, they're going to finally be open, and they're ready. We have Brooke here. She's the Chief Mission Officer for Morgan's Wonderland. It's been a year of putting pause. Finally, today's the big day for y'all. How excited are you? I am so excited. To be able to hear laughter and see the joy in our guest's face again after a year is just a blessing. What a way to start our day off today. And then here we see Joy. She's already having some fun. She's wearing her mask. So tell me about the procedures that y'all have put in place uh, to make sure that everyone stays safe during the pandemic. Absolutely. So after a lot of consultation with uh, a lot of healthcare professionals and guidance from our community, we have put in a mask mandate. So any individual that's age three or older will need to wear a mask while they're in the park, as well as we are enforcing social distancing and physical distancing throughout the park as well, as well as eating in some designated areas that we have in place in the park. 
And then I want to show off the butterflies that they've put on the ground. That way we remember to keep our six feet apart from parties. So we are, here we have some colorful ones. And this is something that you'll see throughout the park. And then some, also some signage here to remind you where you need to be, uh, those designated eating, eating areas. So, Brooke, the opening today is at 10 a.m. What are the hours for this weekend? So today, Friday, is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then Saturday, we're going to be open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Sunday's 11 to 4. So if you want to come out and join us any day today, tomorrow, Sunday, please go online to morganswonderland.com. Plan your visit with us. Buy your tickets so that when you get here, you're ready to go. Um, and we can't wait to welcome you here. Brooke, last question for you. So we know even Joy is holding on to the railing here just to make sure she stays safe. But that's something that y'all are going to be doing, cleaning periodically. Correct, correct. We have trained our staff and we have gone through multiple different trainings to make sure that we can clean the park, keep every, keep everybody together, but yet make sure that we're monitoring and, and keeping things and surfaces, high-touch surfaces clean. Brooke, thank you so much. You guys stick around with us because in the next half hour, we're going to be at a different part of Morgan's Wonderland. Again, the grand reopening is today. Back to you. Cole, Alicia, thank you. We look forward to that. Perfect weekend for it weather-wise. Sarah Spivey is in for Justin this morning. Pretty good weekend for spring breakers. Absolutely. And you know what? We are going to have a mixture of sun and clouds, but at least we won't have any uh, uh, bad weather for outdoor activities. It's going to be a great weekend. Take a look outside. Speaking of outdoors, uh, we are see starting to see skies clear. Look at that sunshine through those clouds. It has been a cloudy and somewhat foggy morning. It's 62 degrees outside. So a pretty mild start to the day. You know, we usually start off uh, beginning of March day right around near 50 degrees. So uh, again, a little warmer uh, than seasonably average out there right now. But with uh, those skies clearing, we are going to see temperatures rebound nicely. And this afternoon is just going to be gorgeous. Still some fog lingering out near New Braunfels where visibility is down to three miles, down to four miles at JBSA Randolph and down to seven in Castroville and Pleasanton. But we have seen total improvement in in the fog out across parts of the hill country. Visibility is at perfect 10 and skies are actually clear up there, so we're looking at lots of sunshine. Meanwhile, temperatures, as I mentioned, on the mild side, 63 in Hondo, 63 in Pleasanton, 62 in New Braunfels, and 61 in Gonzales. 55 is the cool spot up in Rock Springs. And notice how the humidity is dropping up in the hill country. Dew points in the 30s and 40s. Here we're still pretty muggy outside, but as we go through time, that humidity is going to drop and we're going to get some much drier air in place uh, behind this cold front, which is currently working its way through the hill country and even out toward uh, Del Rio. So behind this cold front, as I mentioned, skies are going to clear. Unfortunately, we do need rain and all of the rain is up around this area of low pressure in parts of uh, North Texas and Oklahoma. So let me take you through the future cast here. Skies are clearing as we speak and in the afternoon, it's going to be nice and sunny. It's going to be dry and it is going to be windy this afternoon. Wind gusts of up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour. So that combination of dry air and windy conditions is going to elevate fire danger today. So if you can avoid outdoor burning, please do uh, as uh, the atmosphere will be dry and windy. So in the high risk future cast again by tomorrow morning, we're going to have some more clouds. So we're going to start off tomorrow with cloud cover. And it'll be cool, uh, but in the afternoon we'll have lots of sunshine and it'll be a nice and comfortable day. So just to round out today's forecast, skies are clearing right now as we speak. By lunch, we'll be in the mid-70s and it'll become breezy around lunch as well. We'll have north winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Sunny and warm in the afternoon, 80 degrees for the high temperature today. It's going to be great for an afternoon walk, perhaps after work or uh, with the family. And then cool in the evening temperatures near 60 degrees at 10. So this weekend is going to be seasonable. We'll have mornings in the upper 40s and afternoons in the 60s, mid to upper 60s. Tomorrow, uh, breezy with morning clouds and pleasant in the afternoon. Sunday, starting off in, uh, right around 46 in the afternoon, high temperature will be near 70 degrees on Sunday. Again, a great week uh, weekend to go for a bike ride or a walk with the family. Looking ahead, rain chances are slim to none. I do think we will have some morning drizzle on Monday morning. And uh, again, it's it's going to be a pretty quiet week. So plus and minuses here. Nice weather, but the minus is that we need the rain and we're just not going to get it other than some drizzle. But that's unimportant rain. <laughs> OK, well, not for now, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. Right.
Thank you, Sarah. Uh, it's just about 921, 63 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, we are revealing the new pick for our KSAT Book Club. Some of the talented writers who contributed to it coming up next. 24, the KSAP Book Club has the perfect book to read during Women's History Month. It's called Revolutionary Women of Texas and Mexico. It's a collection of 18 essays written by many high profile writers like Sandra Cisneros and Carmen Tafoya. Here's a look at the book and more from its creator. We should talk about the women of the revolution because so many hundreds of thousands of women came by themselves. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm gonna take these children. We're gonna go to the United States to a safer place and we're gonna start over and we're gonna have a better future. And in the process, they changed everything. They changed everything and they made where we live the awesome place that it is now. But we have some pretty uh, hard hitters in the book. We have Sandra Cisneros contributed to essays. Lauda Esquivel, who uh, wrote the book Like Water for Chocolate. It's been so worth it that um, uh, to see her born and well received in the world has been well, honestly one of the high points in my life so far. Well, there's much more ahead on GMSA at 9. San Antonio Spurs came up short against the Oklahoma City Thunder. David and RJ will join us to discuss what the silver and black are up to next. A lot of people now looking behind their bathroom mirrors after a woman in New York discovers a hole that led to a secret apartment. We'll say what that woman plans to do about it. A case at Defenders Investigation finds that CPS Energy was using a college student as its meteorologist. Dylan Collier will explain how, did, how is this different from what other energy companies do. And welcome back. It's 929. As energy companies braced for last month's winter blast, many of them had in-house meteorologists describing how bad it would get. But a Defender's investigation found that's not the case with CPS Energy. The utility instead relies on a Minnesota-based weather service and a local contractor who until this week called himself Kid Coldfront on social media. He told CPS he graduated from UIW with a degree in meteorology in December. But a university spokesman told Dylan Collier he's still a student and is not listed as a graduate. Our Dylan Collier joins us live now. And Dylan, what surprised you most about CPS Energy's approach to monitoring the weather? Good morning, Stephanie. Uh, I just think it's, it's really clear that it's a top-heavy company. They have 39 members of a CPS senior leadership team, and at no point have they, at least as far as we can tell, had a full-time meteorologist actually working for the utility. So you have a, a lot of people at the top, but really not a lot of attention paid, at least locally, to having somebody consistently provide a, a forecast. We saw one uh, certified meteorologist testify before the uh, state Senate last week during hearings on all those outages. Did that guy warn management at the energy provider he works for about yeah. what was coming? Yeah, Bob Rose from the lower Colorado River Authority. Uh, he testified for several minutes about all the emails that he sent. Uh, he talked about February 9th being the key day, uh, it, knowing at that point, six days ahead of the storm's arrival, uh, that there would be sub-freezing temperatures for a long period of time Time, possible infrastructure damage uh, and basically alerted them that they needed to prepare for the worst and prepare their infrastructure for what could be a massive hit. And what questions about forecasting the weather has CPS still not answered? Stephanie, pretty much all of them. They, they told us how they get their weather. It's a company based out of Minnesota that provides a weather platform called Weather Century. They use this local contractor who may or may not be a graduate of UIW's uh, meteorology school. Uh, other than that, they've gone radio silent. This was a story that we worked on uh, for several weeks and I've had many conversations with spokespeople for CPS. They would call, they wanted to know what we were working on, uh, and at no point did they actually give an official response. They refused to make Paula Gold Williams available for an interview multiple times. They had ample opportunity to do so. So, uh, you know, we first requested information February 18th. Now it's 
towards the first uh, week of March ending, and we still don't know a lot. Yeah, here it is, March 5th. Yeah. Let's assume for just a second, Dylan, that Paula Gold Williams maybe is watching this right now. If he had the opportunity to ask her one question, what would be the first question out of the gate? Do you plan to hire a meteorologist to have on staff? Are you going to pay more attention to uh, the weather aspect of not only energy infrastructure, but whether you were uh, properly prepared, whether you hedged your bets uh, and had enough natural gas on reserve and were able to uh, you know, not stick potentially the consumers, the customers of San Antonio with a $1 billion bill? Yeah, I'm not surprised. It would be kind of a multifaceted question, wasn't it? Would yeah, be. sorry. Overall, a lot of questions. <laughs> I have a, a lot of questions and a lot of things that we're looking at, and so far, no answers from them. Right, just uh, just some pushback, right? Yes. Okay, Dylan Collier with our Defenders. Thank you. More coverage to come uh, right here on KSAT and online at KSAT.com. I'm taking a look outside with live cam. 64 degrees, and I'm very thankful for the sun we've been getting, especially after hearing again about <laughs> last month's winter storm. Oh, my goodness. Let's just leave that in our mm -hmm. past. Let's focus on the fact that this weekend is going to be really nice. We're going to be looking at temperatures climbing into the 60s in the afternoons, but today we have started off with quite a few clouds. Those clouds are already clearing and we're seeing improvement uh, in droves about visibility. Visibility up to 10 miles at Bernie Stage Airfield, up to 10 in Kerrville after being down to a quarter of a mile. Skies are clearing, as you can see on the visible satellite imagery. We're seeing total sunshine mainly up in Kendall County near Bandera. It's just some wispy clouds out in Kerrville and near Canyon Lake, it's sunny as well. You can see where that clearing line is. It's kind of right along I-35, so it's still pretty cloudy out toward Floresville, Seguin, and on the southeastern side of Bear County. Still fairly cloudy along Atascosa County near Pleasanton too, but look at all the sunshine out near Del Rio and in Eagle Pass. So we are actually going to have a weak front move through, and that's what's going to allow those skies to clear, and it's going to get dry and windy. Winds are going to gust up to about 25 miles per hour from the north. It'll be sunny and warm in the afternoon. 80 degrees for the high temperature and cool. I don't know about you, but my car still has that brine on it and still has a ton of dirt on it from the storms a couple of weeks ago, the winter storm a couple of weeks ago. So for your car wash forecast, I'm giving you the green light. This weekend, you can wash your car because we're not going to be expecting rain chances. We may have some morning drizzle on Monday, but generally you're going to get a few good days of a clean car out of uh, your car wash if you decide to get one. Speaking of that morning drizzle on Monday, I'll have a look ahead to the week and we'll talk about temperatures this weekend and how it's going to be a nice weekend to get outdoors in just a few minutes. Mark, Steph. I like your license plate. I hate dirt. I <laughs> Thank you, Sarah Spivey. There, yeah, a little sun's trying to peek through out there right now in a couple of these different different camera shots around town. It's uh, just now about 935. And the Spurs, our Spurs, hit the All-Star break on a bit of a down note after a loss last night to Oklahoma City. Davis back. RJ is here with a breakdown of what went wrong for the Silver and Black and what to look forward to in the second half of the season. Good morning, guys. Martin, it was a bit of a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. It was terrible. <laughs> yes, uh, terrible one of the night. one of the worst losses of this season. Like just it. because, I mean, you, you're playing Oklahoma City, a team coming off of their own back-to-back. -back. You're playing at home, and uh, the wheels just kind of fell apart for San Antonio in the second half. Turnovers, David. Turnovers. Um, hey, you remember when you go out and just play with your neighborhood friends mm -hmm. out in the uh, in the park on the with the hoop out there? Right. And it was always make it, take it. Yes. If you made it, you get it back, and you keep going yes. playing 21 or whatever. That's what the Spurs looked like they were playing last night. Make oh, it, no. take it. You, Oklahoma City, you make it, wow, we'll let you have it again because we're going to give it back to you at the other end of the floor. They wasted their time running the floor. They gave the well ball away seven times in the third quarter. Seven in the third quarter. 19 in the game. Mm -hmm. Ouch. So, yeah, yeah 19 turnovers for San Antonio uh, led to 26 points for Oklahoma City. And as David mentioned, the third quarter there was really kind of what turned this game yeah. around. The Spurs were up by 14 points. Here I am thinking of uh, all the great talking points that we were going to talk about this morning. And then, uh, as we said, just the turnovers killed him. DeMar and DeJounte had nine turnovers combined. So I remember, for them. Sorry, I remember one pass went to Pop. 
I remember another couple of passes just went to whoever was in the stand. They had a thousand people in the stand. You know, they were doing the, the, the night for uh, first, first responders right. and stuff like Great. that. So they threw a couple of those folks, which I guess that's nice. You know, here, take a ball with you when you go home. Thanks for showing. I mean, thanks for everything you're doing. But I mean, they were throwing it everywhere. But to the guy that was in the black uniform, were they wearing black lessons? They weren't wearing They, they were wearing their city uniforms, their city jerseys. Oh, no. Edition. Did they, th there well, you they, go. That's probably yeah. why they got confused. Well, there you go. <laughs> Passing the ball to the guy with the same colored uniform that they were wearing. That's yeah. a problem. So that, that would not be good. Did not work in out, any, so. uh, yeah, in any level of basketball. Uh, let's go ahead and hear what uh, Dejounte and Patty had to say about this one and the uh, second half of the season coming up. We were getting a little deep and you know starting myself uh, jumping and passing, which is dangerous in NBA uh, basketball. Period. But you know, as a team, uh, I feel like we could have made you know those extra passes right away. You know, just making the defense move. As tough as we might think this first half of the, the season was, it's only going to get much worse. Get away from it during this uh, few-day break and um, recharge and, and be in the right mindset coming back. Hey, Mark and Steph, have you ever heard of a guy named Shea Gilgis Alexander? <laughs> No. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, Should we have? Yeah, well, he had 33 last night for okay. Oklahoma City. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did yeah. hear about that guy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just take. He it goes by me. SGA. That's SGA. kind of the easiest way to. Ah, yeah. He had 33 uh, last night. Okay. Yeah, it was. And uh, the good news is, I don't think they have to play Oklahoma City again no, this they year don't. until oh, maybe yeah. in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're they're like one and two against one of the worst teams in the West. Mm. Go figure that. Yeah, so now there we move go. on to the second half of the season. Spurs still in playoff contention here. Is this going to be a five-day break? They come back, take on the Dallas Mavericks, but it is going to be a grind. We're talking about 40 games in a little bit over two months. Yeah. They have to make up part of the rodeo road trip, which they lost. So I think there's like four there's long road trips. total of five games that they yeah. lost that were postponed. Yeah, and they got, what, 40 in 68 days. Mm -hmm. And there's an all-star weekend, which you have to ask yourself why. Are, are either and, you guys going to watch all-star games? I don't even know um, when it is. No, you know, <laughs> I don't even know when it is. <laughs> it's All-Star Weekend. Well, next, well, well next here's the sad next thing. Time, here's right. the sad yeah. thing. Keldon Johnson gets gets put on the, the Shining Stars, stars roster, stars. and there's not even a game this year. Yeah. It's like, well, that. Aww. So, I mean, congratulations um, to him. He was not even a first-round draft pick, and he's on the team. But they're not playing. Yeah, uh, tough break for Keldon because that, that's a pretty good honor, a rising star yeah. there. And as we yeah. move ahead, also, what's going to happen? Trade rumors starting oh, to fly here all we over go. the place. Oh. LaMarcus Aldridge. Ooh, Marcus Aldridge still has that stomach problem. <laughs> yeah. I. And he hadn't I, played a lot this year. I think they're year. making up stuff to keep him out. No. Ooh, man. We call call making up that. stuff, but trying to uh, keep him healthy. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you, you guys want to tackle that in a week or two? Yeah, we'll, I think yeah. we'll have to. We'll be back yeah. next week. Okay. But for now, they're going to take a little break. You guys take yeah. an all-star break, too, okay? Okay. Yes. You need right. to well wash those San Antonio Spur uniforms with the nice colors on them, get them all ready for the second half. Make sure they're throwing it to the right guy. Yeah. Exactly. Pop's like, not to me. I would want him to pass it back. All right. Like, oh. maybe nobody would have noticed. I can't believe you didn't throw it like a chair, like Bobby Knight style. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you, guys. Thank Hope you, you have a good weekend. 939, 64 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and the doors at Morgan's Wonderland are finally reopening today after a year. We're going to check back with Alicia Bedetta live after the break. The day is finally here. Morgan's Wonderland in San Antonio celebrating their grand reopening today after a year-long closure due to COVID-19. After working with medical experts, the staff at the theme park say they're ready to bring the park to life again with guests from across the world. Alicia Beretta is live from Morgan's Wonderland, where doors will open in about 15 minutes now. Yes, people are so excited. We know already uh, people have pre-purchased their tickets online because that's the thing that you must do this time around. But I'm not going to juggle here because I don't know how to juggle. But this is one of the water. In oh, my goodness, I can't even get it in. The interactive displays, we're going to try to make it in the basket. Obviously, I'm no good at this. But, you know, as you can see, I'm touching um, these little balls that they have here. And this is a high frequent touch area. So this is one of the ones that will be obviously cleaned frequently. There's hand sanitizer stations throughout. And even in the park earlier, we showed you those social distancing measures. So if you're gonna come here, these are the things that you need to know if you visit Morgan's Wonderland starting today. So on your screen, you'll see that masks will be required for anyone three 
years and older. Social distancing measures are in place. So earlier we showed you how they have the butterflies stenciled in on the ground. Designated eating area. So you still are allowed to bring your picnic, your drink, but you'll have to eat in certain areas. The big thing, that contactless entry, we talked about that. That brings us to our next point, the hours of the park. Morgan's Wonderland reopens today. So again, we're about 15 minutes away from the grand reopening. They'll be opening until 2 p.m. today. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And Sunday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. But don't forget that your tickets must be purchased online. And that's because there will be capacity limits. Oh, my goodness, you guys, I still can't make it. I'm going to sit here all morning long and try try my best. Maybe the kids or the parents that come out here will at least land one. It's not my morning, you guys. It's definitely not for me. But again, it's been very exciting. They've been waiting a year to make this happen. They have worked closely with medical experts to make sure that it's safe for all families to come and enjoy some fun. Reporting live from Morgan's Wonderland, Alicia Barrera. Hey, that's all news. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. And whether you make it or not, it's still a lot of fun. Well, after a cloudy, foggy, drizzly morning, things are starting to get a little brighter out there. They are. We're watching right now as the skies are starting to clear outside with one of our live cams. You can see we're seeing precious pockets of blue within those clouds. And it is now mostly cloudy at the airport rather than overcast. 63 degrees and winds are from the west at about 10 miles per hour, but very soon here, those winds are going to turn to the north and it's going to be a breezy day. We're going to see wind gusts of up to about 25 miles per hour. Showing you the visible satellite imagery and you can see in the northwestern corner of Bear County, it's totally sunny already. But in the southeastern corner of Bear County, we're still seeing overcast skies. But skies are going to clear and it's going to be a sunny and beautiful day. Still cloudy in Pleasanton, Floresville, Carn City. But there's plenty of sunshine out west toward Del Rio and up north toward the hill country. 64 in Kerrville, 61 in Del Rio. 63 in Carrizo Spring, 61 in Gonzales, and 64 in Pleasanton. We're already starting off a little bit warmer than seasonably average. Seasonably average temperatures are in the uh, uh, 40s right now, over 40s uh, usually this time of day, and we can, we're already about 15 to 20 degrees warmer than that. And so today, a cold front is sitting to our north right now. That's going to push on through. And I use the word cold front just as a technical term. It is not going to get cold behind this front, but we are going to see dry our air push on in as dew points will fall behind this front from the 50s and upper 50s near 60 degrees all the way into th the 30s. And so it's going to be a nice and dry, uh, pleasant afternoon. It will, however, be windy behind the front as well. Winds are going to gust up to about 25 miles per hour. You combine that with the dry air and we do have a bit of an elevated fire danger today. So please try to avoid outdoor burning if you can because the dry and windy conditions would spread grass fires if they develop pretty rapidly. It's going to be warmer too in the afternoon because we're going to have total sunshine and that drier air as well. High temperature right near 80 degrees around San Antonio, but in the mid 80s closer to Laredo down south, 80 degrees for the high in Gonzales and 82 in Beeville. So a beautiful Friday becoming breezy with those winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. And although it's going to be warm in the afternoon, we're going to see temperatures quickly cool by 10. We'll already be in the 60s. And while by no means that's cold, it is going to be cooler. And you'll notice it this evening if you have Friday evening plans. It's going to be a beautiful weekend too. Breezy tomorrow. Uh, we'll start off in the 40s with morning clouds, but afternoon sunshine, mid to upper 60s in the afternoon on Sunday as well. And unfortunately, we really don't have much chance for rain over the next seven days. There has been improvement in the drought monitor, still some severe drought out to the west. But as a whole across the state of Texas, 54% of the state of Texas is in drought. And this is a look at rainfall potential over the next seven days. It does not look good for the entire state of Texas and here in San Antonio. So it's going to be a pretty dry week. The one exception is going to be on Monday morning when I do expect us to see some drizzle in the area on Monday morning, uh, but no substantial rain chances in the next seven days. And that is unfortunate because we are under drought conditions 
options at least we'll be able to enjoy the weekend with some time outdoors, maybe going for a local hike at one of the parks. It is kind of sad though. I was out at the river walk yesterday. Oh man, all those plants. So many of them are dead and there's also dead fish in the river. Yes. So, all result of the cold weather. Thank goodness we don't have any cold weather in our forecast. Yes, thank goodness. Thank you, Sarah. By now it's just about 10 till 64 degrees. A hole behind a bathroom mirror leads to the discovery of a hidden apartment in New York. After the break, what the hole is there for? Mirror, mirror on the wall. New York City woman looks behind one and tells all. As seen as Jeannie Mose reports, she used TikTok to show millions of viewers the weird discovery she made behind her bathroom mirror. It started with a weird draft in the bathroom. Cold air blowing on me. You can see my hair blowing in the cold wind. And the air is coming from the mirror. And thus began the saga. Look at what she found in her New York City apartment. It was freaky enough to send others scurrying to check their bathroom mirrors. All right, we're good. But Samantha Hartso wasn't. More than a hole. Just an electrical. Oh, no, no, no. There's a room back there. Samantha documented her discovery in a four part series on TikTok. I have to go in. As viewers warned her away. Cover it up. Pretend you never saw it. Move out. Don't go in there! Ah! Ready? Yes. Part three, we're going in armed with a hammer. Though Samantha told us later. Weirdly, I wasn't that scared. Candyman. Those who had seen the movie Candyman. What's behind the mirror? We're scared for. I have not seen Candyman. At this point, I feel like I should be in it. In she went, or tried, as one of her roommates stood watch. Oh, your hip's not gonna make it. <laughs> Straddling the inside of this wall right now. Though worried the wall might Don't break, she it. squeezed her way through. Oh my God. She's actually in. And once in, she found trash bags, boxes, pipes, not just a room. It was a whole apartment. And she lived to TikTok about it. Made it out alive. It turns out a woman in a Chicago apartment building was murdered in 1987 after burglars came in through the bathroom mirror. Apparently some buildings have easy access for maintenance people to get to plumbing fixtures. Management at Samantha's building declined to comment, but Samantha called maintenance to come over and take a look. Some were reminded of that old right guard commercial. Oh, oh no. Where the neighbor borrows the guy's deodorant, it stinks when your mirror is an open door. Ginny so Mose, so CNN. Hi, neighbor, how are you? Oh. New York. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't it be cool she opened up and Nicolas Cage was there with a torch and a copy of the Declaration of Independence? Like a national treasure. Oh my goodness. Well, she's brave. People find things in walls all the time though. But but like a whole room. Wow. You know what things she, in older buildings. You know she's really smart? She'll find a way to access that apartment and sublet it or something. Right. Because real estate's so expensive exactly. in New York metro area. She'll make some money. Yeah, she can make some money if anybody would want to live there. Well, that's true. She's braver than I am. My favorite part of that, oh, your hips don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, roommate. Yeah, okay. She, she shimmied her way in oh, there. Oh, my yeah. goodness. And how many people have watched this story and immediately thought Candyman? You, you thought that, Kevin? As yes, well? I did, too. No wonder. Well, she hadn't seen it, which is why she didn't have that fear. She wasn't worried, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hey, don't been. forget, you can watch Coming to America, the sequel on Amazon That's Prime. Right. It's actually started, uh, released last night. Awesome. Have a great weekend, guys. See y'all at noon.